Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. And welcome back to the Mangy Monk. Uh, that was the name of our tavern in the Broken Cask. And in this episode of the Dungeon Dive, I'm going to do a recap of what happened to the rest of my session one and just talk a little bit about my feelings about the game. Uh, I can say without any hesitation that I think this game is super fun. It is totally chill, just kind of a relaxing time. It, it, it's, it's kind of like how I would want to spend my time in a cozy tavern. And that's the feeling that this game gives me. It's pretty easy. I... If I did have a complaint about the game, I wish that there was a little more danger involved. So there is a little bit of a pressure luck, kind of a long-term pressure luck element to the game because each session can end in two ways. You can decide to end a session when like all of your workers are exhausted or you're out of money to do anything else, or one of the prompts can have you prematurely end your session. If that happens, then you have to roll and you might your end might lose prestige. My end, since I just opened, was at uh, zero prestige anyways. So I, uh, in my last session, I actually ended prematurely because of an event that I rolled on. But for a long time, I was uh, just continuing to play. My workers were continuing to hit their tasks. Um, I didn't have any trouble really until I just made that one roll that prematurely ended my session. I think some of the target numbers that you have to hit with the various tasks that you send your heroes and or your workers to do, they might be a little low because there was quite a, at least a couple where the task was like two on a mind and my alchemist already had a plus two to his uh, mind ability. So there was no way that I could fail that. But I guess it's not really a game about winning or losing. It is a game about building a tavern, about creating um, interesting scenarios and situations that happen inside the tavern. You know, we didn't tune in uh, week to week to watch Cheers wondering if, uh, if 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 people were going to uh, die <laughs> in the bar or or if, or if it, the, every we didn't tune in every week to wonder if the if cheers was going to go out of business so I guess in that way it does kind of simulate that just that nice pleasant feel of of, of being and of manage, of being in and managing a cozy tavern. But here are some of the other things that happen. I, I really do like the way that this one session ended up. So um, I ended up having to do some, some cooking, right? And my task was to make a roast duck, but I rolled and it turned out that the duck that I brought in to cook was actually a transmogrified mage who right before I was about to slaughter the duck, he changed back into a mage. And in anger, he put Odo to sleep. So Odo was knocked out for like the next uh, the next task. Um, a common uh, guest came in, a crafter, and she shared some tips with us. So I was able to add plus one to my next mind roll. She uh, told me how, you know, she, she gave me some tips on how to properly uh, do a task better. So I used her tips and, and was able to, to uh, utilize that. Um, then I had to clean up, and I said I had to clean up the mess caused by the transmogrified um, uh, mage, and um, I, I was in, in preparing for a themed dinner. So if you remember my uh, my mangy monk, one of my unique services is doing themed dinners. So I had some uh, wizards coming in for a themed dinner because they wanted to read some of my tomes, some of my books that I had on the shelves. Um, I successfully cleaned up before they arrived. They enjoyed their themed dinner and gave me a tips times two. So I pulled off this great dinner and I also got a piece of extravagant gear and extravagant gear is in my storage. And this is now an item that I can convert a regular patron to a hero. I don't have a regular patron yet, but when I do, I can convert them to a hero. That is super cool. And the heroes, uh, as you know, if you watched the, the previous video, you can send your heroes out on different quests. So after the um, incident with the wizards coming for the themed dinner, I went uh, shopping 
and I found a wondrous item. I, I gave my uh, I gave um, Olean some gold. She went to the um, she went to the store, and uh, it's kind of like you you. It's almost like uh, sending out sending out your kid with with some money. Say, okay, bring me back something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what happens when you go shopping you can spend more money to get specific items but i just gave her some money and say all right go buy something unusual and so she came back with a bogan's best beans it's a kind of coffee that i can drink in order to ha get some more morale and stuff in, in my next session or in any session that i want to use it on uh, then I went ahead, ahead and built, and I spent 10 to build up my uh, common room. So I upgraded my common room, you know, where the people hang out, to become an average drinkery. So now I have a little more dice manipulation for when I roll on my guest tables. Uh, so our, my guest tasks, I should say. So after building up the new common room, I rearranged the common room, and I totally screwed up. I messed up the feng shui of my common room, and the guests did not like that at all. So I had to uh, spend a whole day rearranging it back. Uh, then I spent a day or spent some time on my landscaping outdoors, and I discovered a whole bunch of shrews that were getting into like the flowers and the, the ornamental vegetation. And I killed them all, and one of the neighbors was super happy with me taking care of the shrews in our little area of the town that they gave me a tip, so I earned some more gold. After that, some knights stopped by for some tea, and the knights uh, uh, gave a really arousing speech. You know, they had come back from some kind of quest, and they were in good spirits, and they gave a speech, and it helped to... Uh, to motivate my workers to work a little harder uh capitalism for the win there right and then um so i i finally i built a new kind of brew new kind of beer and my so if you remember um odo's wife was in town odo's ex-wife was visiting and that was kind kind of like a drama that was starting and so i said that she as a, a as also an alchemist helped odo brew this new beer but unfortunately, the concoction backfired and it opened up a magical portal. And so I had to close uh, my bar for that uh, at the end, at, for that session. So that session ended. But what I said is, is, is to incorporate that idea of Odo's ex-wife visiting. I uh, said that she was actually, and her name is Zalia. She actually fell into the magical portal and it closed up. So like, where did she go? And so now I have that as kind of a story thread that I can continue on into further sessions. So it is very possible in this game by just rolling a couple D6 and by just uh, looking at a few charts, actually a lot of charts, you really can kind of chart the and plot out and create the story of these people, these patrons, these these um, these customers, these heroes, these workers, all of the people who inhabit your tavern. And the more sessions you play, the more backstory you are going to build, the more dramatic connections there are going to be uh, with the people. Now, a lot of it is you as the player, as the journaler, as the innkeeper, as the dice roller, you know, you as the game player, you are going to have to create some of that. Not all of it comes from the game mechanisms, but the game mechanisms and the charts and the, the crunch do give you enough um, of a, a, enough dots that it becomes pretty easy to fill in to create some interesting stories. So, um, so beginning the next session, what I would do is I, I would start with my, I've got uh, 10 gold left here from my last session. So that's in my bank right now. And then I could go ahead and roll up on the chart here to find out like some other things that are, that have maybe been going on in the background in between uh, sessions here. And I could find out the mood so I could roll on a mood to start with. So like, you know, uh, that magical portal opening up, maybe maybe the mood is a little weird right now in the bar. So we could say a one. Uh, the fire cracks merrily and there's good cheer all around. Okay, so maybe Zalia wasn't well liked. <laughs> maybe most of the people um, in, in the tavern are actually happy that she went through the portal. I don't know about poor Odo. I know they were ex. Uh, he... Uh, Zalia was his ex, but he probably still cares about her, at least as a human being. So he might want to, uh, we might want to deal with that. 
And then I could also roll a behind the scenes since your last session to see what's going on. Six, uh, you have a new loyal customer. Roll a D6. All right, so here we go. We have a new, uh, maybe a, a new regular that could uh, arrive at, at our uh, bar in between sessions. So there is a little bit that happens in between each game, and those can inform your fiction for the subsequent game, the subsequent sessions that you are going to play. So overall, if you're looking for something that is really lighthearted and just fun, relaxing and simple, I do recommend the Broken Cask. It is, I think it was like $12 or something on Amazon. You can get the PDF from their website from uh, Sk uh, Shoreless Skies. I think it's also available on DriveThruRPG. Um, as far as these kinds of roll and look up journaling style solo RPGs, this is one of my favorites that I've played so far. I'm not sure about the longevity. We'll see. I'm going to continue playing some sessions. But for something I can just pick up and play and have a good time, I really did enjoy it. A lot of that has to do with my just kind of innate love for this kind of theme for owning a tavern and building a tavern and seeing the kind of stuff that happens. And this game here satisfies that completely because I never want a game where I have to like manage and a ledger and the, and the accounting like that kind of stuff doesn't um, interest me. It's when I read about a tavern in a book, all of the stuff that happens, all of the heroes, all of the adventure, all of the weird intrigue, all of the friendships and the bonds that happen around a table uh, filled with beer. You know, that's the kind of thing that I like about that particular theme and the broken cask um, really nails that, I think. And it, it satisfies me for what I'm looking for in this kind of game. So, um, yeah, the broken cask. I hope you guys enjoyed these uh, couple of videos and we'll talk to you later. Bye bye.